Here's a disclaimer before I begin the video. So much of this video right here is of my own personal opinion. While some of the opinions may be shared by others in the community, it is of course not unanimous. So just keep that in mind. Also these are public test changes. So not only are these aspects or dynamics of the game likely to change, but they are tests. So that might mean that you know they may be in balance, but that's why we're, I'm making this video basically. And it's not meant to denounce high res or its game smite in any way but to just pri provide some feedback from an avid player both casually and competitively. So, Okay, to start off we're going to talk about uh, some of the changes to the actives. The actives are now called relics, if you have not seen already, and they are actually completely free. You may choose a relic at level 1 and again at level 12. Uh, I don't really have too much flack with the relics other than the fact that having some of them level 1 to 5 is unbalanced. For example, let's say uh, a shell, which is shell of absorption from season 2. Um, that shell relic at level 5 fight is actually ridiculously potent, um, negating large amounts of damage due to the crazy protections it provides at such a low level, not even to account for the damage mitigation. Also, some of the uh, the relics are still bad. Wrath, which is basically Hand of the Gods, it's, there's no reason real, real reason to pick it up unless you're trying to go for some cheese strat. And the choice of actives at Season 2's end were actually there was quite plentiful, and there were some really good actives that uh, got left out. Uh, bar some of the useless ones like Wrath, Fist, Sprint 3, except for on Merc, and you know, some of those. Um, relics aren't exactly a bad idea, but some changes still need to be made. The big issue with the relics revolves around the most important relic of them all, or active, um, Purification, which was previously known as Purification Beads, of course. They've been nerfed to a 160 second cooldown without any cooldown reduction upon activating them. And removing the 3 second CDR was fine, that was perfectly fine, because it was just an unnecessary addition to the item. But increasing the cooldown by almost 2 times is where many people in the Smite community are confused at the moment. Smite has a ridiculous amount of CC, whether that amount of CC is balanced or imbalanced is controversial to say the least, but the existence of beads provided gods a perfectly fine way to deal with that amount of CC. However, Hyrez felt as though purification beads were too mandatory, and from the history of their balancing, they don't really like mandatory items, I guess due to staleness and stagnancy. Um, to begin, the only reason this item is actually mandatory is due to the very high amount of CC that they are adding into the game each god with each god that they implement, for example, Jing Tin. Also, why does a mandatory item have to be a bad thing? In competitive settings, some aspects will always be mandatory, or I guess more advantageous than other aspects of the game. For example, boots. Uh, boots are basically a mandatory item, and they have been since the start of the game, with some exception when you build movement speed in other items, but you get the point. Boots are necessary because everyone has the option to that higher move speed in order to keep up with the enemies or with your, even your teammates, you have to be building those boots. In other competitive games, must buys exist and they don't exactly hinder the game. Um, for example, let's take CSGO. Body armor and helmet in CSGO are must buys when you have the money of course, and boots in both League of Legends and Dota 2 are must buys, and they don't hinder the game whatsoever, They're just they just exist and that's fine. And the same can be said with CC. Uh, crowd control and smite. Almost every god in the game has access to that hard CC, minus someone like Rat who has it in that awful acorn that no one builds anyway. So having access to those purification beads is a must, but the cooldowns of CC and the new purification relic, they just don't add up. It was already incredibly easy to pop an enemy god's beads, and I mean like incredibly easy. Being able to walk up to someone, taunt, stun, silence, or even fear them into using their beads, and then walking back and then 90 seconds or even shorter based on regular ability cooldowns, doing it again without their access to beads is basically a free kill. Hi-Rez is attempting to compensate this beads nerf with the addition of crowd control reduction to many new and old items. The problem with this is that CCR, or crowd control reduction, does nothing to many of the major CCs within the game. I mean sure, it may lower the duration of a Ymir freeze or an Athena taunt, or whatever, but there are so many things it doesn't protect against. To name just a few, a Sobek Pluck, a Noelic Solt, a Knock Silence, a Hades Ult, any knockup in the game, which is basically the best CC in the game, because you can't beads it, or a Fenrir Ult, or anything of that nature. And actually, if you want to see a list of all the CCs it does nothing against, click the link in the description. Thanks to Otso Arrow for compiling that list and sharing it with the public on the Smite subreddit. So thanks to him, or her, I'm not sure. Um, not to mention, there's a glaring inconsistency that squishies are the ones in need of purification beads, they're the ones who need it the most, obviously. 
So building into really any of those CCCR items or CCR, um, it's not really optimal because you're going to be need needing to build DPS and everything. So it just it's really hard to build into those with to make an optimal build. Okay, now we're going to talk about the map changes, <clears throat> and I can say pretty surely. Uh, of course, not with 100% certainty, but I feel like I can say this pretty surely, that players were not mad with the existence of a speed buff in general. Like, I don't think a mid laner or a solo laner or even the jungle was mad with the existence of the speed buff. I think they were at, rather um, confused with the weird, unintuitive placement it held within the fire giant pit. It was just, it just seemed weird. It was it just seemed clunky or like kind of like a placeholder. And not even to mention that the minions were basically a level 1 circuit bot in that they died in like two autos or just by one damaging ability. It just didn't make the changes didn't make too much sense. It promoted fighting for a buff that wasn't even worth fighting for. Sure, it gave you it gave you a decent buff. The speed buff was a little bit nerfed uh, from season 2, but it like the XP and the gold was pretty much worthless to be honest. Now, the speed buff has been removed completely, leaving just creeps there with a meager XP and gold reward. The fact that they are there in the first place is really questionable, but the major issue is that they completely removed the speed buff. I don't know why this happened, I can't tell you, but there are now only two buff camps on the map. The red buff, which being the damage buff, and the blue buff being the mana regen. In my opinion, mandatory mandatory items and things of that nature aren't what make a game stale, but rather changes like this. The jungler now only has two buffs to do, with XP camps to do along the way. Buffs add a good dynamic to the game, I think, where fighting over them or stealing them is a strategy in its own. Removing that factor just subtracts from the game's strategy, competitiveness, and really sheer entertainment value. I think we can all agree that defense and health were too incredibly potent at the end of Season 2, and I guess too easily purchasable, especially paired in items like Midguardian Mail for 350 health with 60 physical protections, or an item like Bulwark of Hope with 450 health and 60 magical protections, which, don't even get me started on that, Bulwark of Hope now is actually, I think, even better. It's, it's a really good item now. Um, however, nerfing these items while simultaneously buffing many tank shredding items and adding even newer ones, it just doesn't quite seem balanced. It seems a little bit overkill. Being able to catch supports out so easily and kill them quite quite simply, I guess, cannot be good for the game. The support role is already the least played and definitely least praised role in the game. So furthering this this idea is not good at all. Also on that same note of items being adjusted, what is with the crusher? I don't I don't really understand it. So the crusher is an item that basically promotes split pushing. The Crusher was actually buffed quite strongly. It now gives a max of 50% attack speed and 25 penetration against towers at max of 5 stacks. You have to hit it 5 times to get these stats. Split pushing has and always will be a very stale dynamic to the game. It promotes unskillful strategy and I guess hinders strong team fight, just team fights in general I guess. Um, and the viability of them. It should not be something being promoted in the game, as backdooring and split pushing were already quite easily done with the other penetration items in the game. There's still a lot of god changes that need to occur, in my opinion, and I feel like a lot of the Smite community feel, holds the same opinion. Um, there are many of these god-like balance issues, but those are definitely more flexible, I guess, and uh, with different items they may change later on. And Hyra's is likely to nerf those that need nerfs and buff those that need buffs, of course. Whether they nerf them or buff them in the correct place is, you know, up to the player. But um, we just gotta wait, and uh, I feel like Hyra's will definitely come out with more balance changes for gods, at least. So in summary, some of these Season 3 changes are fun and interesting. However, um, I guess thus far, of course, able to change. They're, they're able to change before live patch day. There are too many glaring issues in both balance and, more importantly, the fun of the game. So, yeah, guys, thank you for watching the video. If you agree or disagree, uh, tell me why in the comments below. We can get a healthy discussion going. This video, again, is not supposed to berate the high res changes, or I'm not even trying to say like that I'm the god of balance and that I can balance this game by myself better than high res. I'm co of course not saying that. I'm just trying to suggest some things or provide some feedback from a person that plays um, very casually at times and also very competitively at times. So yeah, thank you guys and I'll see you later.